If you listen to my uh, weekday show, you might know that every lunchtime I ask a random passerby in the street what really matters to them or to the world or however they choose to interpret the question. And it's surprising how often happiness is cited. And, of course, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness are the three examples of unalienable rights mentioned in the United States Declaration of Independence. So, most of us, it would seem, think happiness is important one way or another. But how to define it, how to measure it and, most importantly, how to achieve it? Matt Pepper has written Happiness, the Inside Job, which promises the seven ways to life-changing happiness. And he's here now. Good to see you. Hi, Bill. Um, let's start with your background, experience, qualifications, uh, first of all. Uh, why are you the man to write this book? Right. Thanks for having me today, first of all. Uh, I have been in this world of kind of well-being and mental well-being and health for about 20 years. Mm. Um, it all started for me when I was 12 years old. I was bedridden for six months. Were you? Yeah. What caused that then? Do you mind saying? Um, I think it was a culmination of being a very sickly child and a few kind of emotional stresses in the teens. Right. Um, but the doctors had written me off and couldn't work out what was going on. Gosh. Um, which was a worrying time for my parents. And then what that led on to was finding an alternative way to get better. Mm. So someone recommended a homeopathic doctor. And to cut a long story short, that got me right within about three months. My word. So, uh, but but, I, well, tell me, just tell me a little bit okay. what that's like then. You know, right. how, how were you feeling before? How does the mood change and yeah. well, what are you in, like afterwards? Yeah, so I was only 12 years old. So yeah. as a kid, you're doing what kids do. Um, but then you begin just to feel a bit kind of tired and run down. And I used to kind of just fall asleep in the chair, right. fall asleep at dinner. And um, yeah, just loads of time off school and bad headaches and couldn't bear the light and right. all that kind of thing. So yeah. it, it was physical things going wrong, was it? Yeah, the, physically, The, the homeopath yeah. managed to... Yeah, well, her. but yeah. this is where the interesting bit is. The, um, during the homeopathic consultation, it's holistic. So they spend an hour with you, and oh. as much as they take note of how your physical symptoms are and what you're experiencing, they'll ask you questions on how you are as a person, what you're stressing about, what you're fearful of, how your emotions are, mm. um, and then they tailor the, the treatments to that. So right. at a young age, right. I was really inspired by, actually, that's a really good way of getting someone better, and obviously I'll ex experience that. Right. So that led me on to become a practitioner. So I've been a practitioner for 20 years helping people both um, get better physically um, and now I'm more known for helping people right. get through kind of emotional traumas and troubles. And, and given that when you go to the careers master, um, that's, that's not going to be an option that, that he hears from, from many students, I, would, I wouldn't imagine. No, they how, try... how, do you, how do you even find the path to, to get this you education? You ignore the career master. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, they tried to dissuade me because that wasn't their normal route. No, no. So, so but... how, what, what did you find you needed to to do this for a well now. i went um straight from a levels so yeah i went straight from there went to the college in london yeah. and trained so yeah i've been doing it for so the, the, there are 20. colleges of homeopathy was yeah it? it was yeah it was a college for yeah right, so okay. that's the bait that's kind of my basic background um so you, so you were a very young practitioner once yeah, then. That, was it was it hard to get people's um confidence in just this I, mere whippersnapper telling me how to well, change I think my so, life a little bit yeah, yeah a little bit how did you get around that then um just trying to convince them with smiling a smiling, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, well, I always enjoyed it, <clears throat> and I yes. obviously love chatting with people and hearing about their stories. Mm. Um, so, and the book's been developed f from that. And interestingly, there's no homeopathic stuff in there. It's not. No, I was going uh, to say that. You see, having skimmed through it, it, it yeah, it, it, you it didn't, to skim? It, yeah, it yeah. didn't seem exactly like you were saying at all. No. no. Well, but what I've learned is that a lot of physical ailments can have an emotional trigger, an right. emotional cause. Right. Um, right. So. I had never read a book that kind of helped help me feel good on the inside. Mm. And I wanted like the tools, tools of the trade, as it were. So I wanted to create the book that I would have liked to have been given 20 years ago that actually says, actually, this is how we do it. Right. Um, you, you break down the, the thing into, into seven, seven chapters, don't you? Yeah. But you, you break that, those chapters then further into several sections. Obviously, we're not going to get through all of that today, and you probably wouldn't want us to anyway, otherwise who would buy the book? But yeah. uh, should, should we perhaps you know, start with the first couple and see how, how far we get? There's a okay. pre-section, pre yeah. where does happiness hang out? Yes. Now that's interesting, you're kind of giving it an identity and you're suggesting that it's, yeah. it's definitely there but it's sort of stuck around a corner then or something, yeah. are you? Yeah, tell, yeah. Me, tell me a bit about that. Well, from working with lots of different people from different backgrounds, um, and some people you would think that would be happy, 
like they might be in a good relationship, might have a good job, and they might have good health levels, but they're still not very happy. Mm. So what I worked out was that you know happiness is within ev within everybody somewhere. Yes. And um, but it's just kind of finding it and and letting it loose. Um, so it's not something where you say, I'll be happy when. A lot of people are saying, I'll be happy when that happens, I'll be when that happens. But then you're just kind of hanging your happiness in the future. Yes. Um, and, what well, I, and, why, and why do we do that, do you think? Do um, we know why we do that? No, I think it's because people are not feeling happy now. So they go, right, when that happens, I will allow myself to feel happy right. then. But the trick is, how do I feel happy right now? Because um, yes, this, this future might never come. After well, the future all. doesn't really exist, does it? No. Even though that's a little bit deep for a Sunday lunchtime. Um, <laughs> but it kind of, it's kind of there, and I always think it's good to get excited about the future. But yes. the trick to happiness is how can I feel as good as I can now, plus get excited about what's coming? And that's the combo. Right, OK. Um, first section proper fire up your own happiness. Now, yes. are we saying that we are all masters of our own happiness destiny? Yeah, then? so fire up your own happiness is exactly that, that you are the master of your own destiny, and step one is to believe that you can do it yourself. Right. And how, how, but how do you, you know, easy to say that, isn't yeah. it? If you, if, you, if you haven't believed that for, I don't know, 20 years or whatever, and yeah, you're, yeah. you're in a sort of a miserable morass, yes. how on earth can you do that? Yeah, but the first step always has to be, I need to take charge of this. I'm not going to let external circumstances dictate my happiness. As much as has gone on in my life and maybe the troubles and the ups and downs that I've been through, at some point you have to say, what can I do to make myself feel better? And when I'm working with clients now, one of the first things I always say is, let's get you feeling good first and then let's see how your life changes. Mm. Not necessarily change your life because often you just change your life but you're taking your kind of inner state with you. Yes. So this book is about how you change your inner state to make you feel better and better and better and then your life changes and your perspective will get better as you feel better. Uh, and could you just give us one concrete example of, of a, a little click I could make in my head to start that process then? As in, fire up your own happiness. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I um, don't believe I'm happy, and, and I, I, you know, I come to you and I say to you, well, it's all very well you saying that, but th yeah. no, that's bad, that's bad. I haven't got a relationship. I'm unhappy. Okay. How, how so if you... that's happening, you need to go straight to chapter four, jump on the groovy train of thought. Because, oh. <laughs> because what you're giving me is a load of negative thoughts, right? which then will not create happiness, because negative thoughts have a negative ah. feeling about it. So chapter four is all about the groovy train of thought and not the negative train of thought okay. and how you can twist them around. So you'd read that chapter and you'd come back to me and go, actually, I don't feel great now, but I'm going to go with the possibility that I can. Right. So unlike a novel, this is a book which you not only can, but should read in all kinds of different orders then. Yeah. The, How interesting. Yeah. Right. Each chapter. So the feedback I've had is that people are using this like a manual. So it sits on their bedside table, and as I said, they might go to the thinking chapter, how you think better. Yes. They might go to the how you get your emotions more positive chapter. They might go to how you get your gut instinct tuned in, or pimp up your purpose. Or we've got lots of yeah, lots of ways. So these seven ways. Lots of grabby little phrases as well, which well, is great. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of deliberate because um, I haven't read that many self-help books, but over twenty years, I've done a lot of courses and visited a lot of practitioners right. and. I wanted to find out the best way um, to mm. become happy, but I didn't want to write a boring book. No. Um, and I wanted it to be snappy, and I wanted it to be very accessible and a little bit fun. Yes. Because it's quite a heavy, heavy topic, but hopefully this book is not heavy at all. We shall talk to her, whose uh, book, uh, 20 years he's been making people feel happier in his counselling work, and he's written Happiness, The Inside Job, The Seven Ways to life-changing happiness. And uh, uh, Matt, before people think this is all about, uh, you know, quite well-off people with nothing better to worry about coming into you and, you know, rattling their jewellery, um, you, you've, you've done some really quite important work. For example, at Great Ormond Street, you've, you've been for a while, haven't you? What, yeah, what, I have, what, Bill. What was happening there exactly? Well, I worked with a senior staff nurse there who came to see me privately because she was feeling very um, low and anxious. And... She had gone back into work and her manager knew all about her situation but saw that she'd gone back in a bit more perky and a bit happier mm. and asked what she'd been doing and she said that she'd come to see me and they were having one of their kind of away days, um, half day trainings and the manager phoned me up and said, please can you teach 40 of our senior staff nurses how to be happy in three hours? 
And um, so I said, yeah, I'll give that a go. Right. Um, but it, and it went so well that I've been going back pretty much monthly for the last two and a half years. Mm. Um, do, do they do they tend to have a particular problem with that then? Because they're they're surrounded by well, ill yeah, children. A, I suppose yeah, they it's would. It's a very they? stressful job, as you'd imagine. Yeah. Um, but what we tried to teach, and what I hopefully thread through the book, is that whatever's happening in life you can, in fact, learn how to feel stronger, happier, more resilient in the circumstances. So whatever's going on, as stressful it is, as it is, that you can um, yeah, build your own resilience and get yourself in a better mood. So, mm. so those three-hour workshops are, uh, are about that, really, and, and they all come out hopefully feeling a bit better and, and having the tools to be able to deal yeah. with stuff. So there was 40 people and yeah. only three hours. Yeah. What would the opposite extreme be? How, how long might you see a single client for? Normally anywhere between five to ten weeks. Right, okay. Yeah. And yeah. At, at the end of, te- of, of those ten, five to ten weeks, yeah. you, you send them on their merry way or do they come back to see you every now and then or yeah. keep in touch? Or? No, exactly, yeah. yeah. I'd say well, we hopefully release them back out into the wild. Yes. And then um, <laughs> i say come back for an MOT if needed. Yes. Yeah. And uh, how hard is it to maintain it once you've got the knack of it, would you say? I wouldn't say it's that tricky and especially with... Um, the book now as as a guide and a manual mm. i've had i'm getting some lovely letters um, mm. and cards and stuff from all over the place where people are saying that it's it's just really helping them and helping them kind of lift their mood and they're kind of seeing life differently and mm. yeah, having a bit of a different perspective on how to deal with things so hopefully this is the toolbox so yes. that's why i didn't want to put the homeopathic stuff in there because that's me using the medicines but this is the practical toolbox that i think people can use and, mm. and see things differently with now, it's funny you should mention medicines because uh, of, often you know depression has, has, mm. is, is treated with with medicines yeah. and uh, could it not be that people come to you and you can't help them because there is actually some physical thing going on your know, chemicals in the brain and that's the route that they need to take and, and if so how how easy is it for you to spot that you're you're not the right man for that job well i've seen look well i've worked had about fifteen thousand consultations over these 20 years and depression and anxiety are up there with with probably two of the main things that I would deal with. Yeah. And as you say, it's um, often chemical imbalance, but that doesn't mean the chemicals can't change if you change your perspective and start to think differently. Um, so I believe it can be that way around. Right. Yeah. So do you ever have to give up on anybody then? Uh, I think one person in 20 years I can think wow. of. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. W- would you admit that some, not unless you haven't given up on them, but, but some clients have a, a less successful outcome than others? Then? I think on the whole... Touch wood, touching my forehead here. Um, I would say that if you can find really what's going on with somebody, like for the example, if you just said, I, I can't see how I can be happy and I can go, right, that's because your thinking needs a tweak. Mm. So my job is to find the bit that needs the tweak. And if we can get right into that yeah. and sort that bit out, I believe, because my belief is that the body and mind self-healing and naturally yeah. that we should feel well and happy. Um, and I do believe that's really possible right. for people. Well, well again, you, you talk about the body being self-healing. Perhaps mm. somebody comes to you, you know, in, in really serious chronic pain. Mm-hmm. Can they be considerably happier with that awful burden? Well, funny you say that, because I was working with a lady quite recently who had really bad migraines constantly, um, and the medications weren't working for her. She'd been to various practitioners and things. Um, but this was a constant migraine, 24-hour-a-day migraine that she'd had for a couple of months. Um, oh, I can't um, imagine what that's Yeah, like. it was horrendous because she had three young kids. Oh, gosh. And, uh, yeah, well, she literally just dropped them at school and go to bed all day and drag herself to feed them and go back to bed, and that was her life. Um, but we managed to sort that out for her. But the, but the way we sort people out is looking at, again, is a holistic thing, that mm-hmm. she'd been through a very stressful time, and I believe that people that go through stressful times and maybe um, bottle up emotions and stuff, the body reacts. Right. So I've seen that a lot. And that and you did that without the help of drugs, chemicals, anything? That was through talking? That was through talking therapy, and I would use my um, homeopathic. Yes. Um, put my homeopathic hat on as well and use those medications too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All natural stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the book is uh, Happiness, the Inside Job, subtitled The Seven Ways to Life-Changing Happiness by Matt Pepper, and it's published by Cabin Press. Uh, I can't see how much it is on there. Not that it matters. It's going to be nine ninety nine. Um, Not bad in paperback. Nine ninety nine. Yeah, on Amazon, or you can order it from any local bookshop. Fantastic. Very nice to have met you. Thank you.